Hello and welcome to Permobile Academy's webinar series. I'm Eleni Halkiotis, and I'll be the moderator for today's session, Finding and Programming the Perfect Position. Now, I'd like to introduce Sarah Lusto and Stuart Denny. The webinar is all yours now. So we wanna say hello everyone, and thank you again for joining us today. We're looking forward to the chance to share with you some of the key power positioning features of our Permobile Power Wheelchairs and hope that you come away from today's webinar with both a greater understanding of the technical application of these features, as well as how they can work either for you as a consumer or how they might apply for those of you working as a supplier or clinician to increase independence and access as well as function. Today, we're gonna to be going through Permobile's unique power seat functions, including memory seating, independent repositioning mode and active reach, and how they offer independent solutions for our power wheelchair consumers. We'd like to start with a little about Permobile as a company and the things we value. And one of the best ways to do that is with this quote from our founder, Dr. Per Udin, who said that every person has the right to have his or her disability compensated as far as possible by aids with the same technical standard as those we all use in our everyday lives. At Permobile, we work every day to make sure these words from our founder echo in everything we do. It's this commitment to that first drove our founders to build their first power wheelchair, and it's what drives us today to push the boundaries of design and technology and the pursuit of innovations that continuously help improve the quality of our life for our users. Um, so we'll, uh, I'll cover some of the, the key features on the Permobile uh, power chairs are specific to Permobile power products, uh, some of which we'll, we'll, which we'll cover more in depth uh, later on in this, in this webinar. Uh, so some of the, the, the uh, the features of the Permobile Power products are the, the customized standing or active reach sequences, as well as the Corpus VS articulating reg leg rests, which allow optimal positioning for independence and daily tasks. These combined with the ability to access these, pos these positions with the press of a button or a switch, while using the customized program position, the seamless integration of the chassis and the Corpus seating system allows the, the base to remain stable with a compact footprint with the suspension remaining active while in any position. So throughout the, the presentation today, we'll cover the uh, some of these features, specifically the, the programming and, and access and how we can access or different access points for these specific positions. As Sarah mentioned, uh, at Permobile, we believe strongly that every person has the right to technology to maximize life participation. And for this reason, we include assignable buttons and soft keys with our standard no charge joysticks, giving the individual easy access to preferred positions and other wheelchair functions. The smart actuators that are included in Permobile's Intelligent Control System or ICS, um, seating electronic system, allows for a variety of customizations to the seating system functionality. When these technologies are used together with active reach, memory seating, and independent repositioning mode, the consumer can face daily tasks head on with these. The Corpus and the Corpus VS models include the Permobile Intelligent Control System or ICS, um, which again is exclusive to Permobile. And what consists of the ICS system is smart actuators, which allow a variety of customization through onboard programming and programming through the ICS switch box. A smart actuator is an actuator that has a sensor attached to it, which allows it to sense its position in space. And smart actuators allow for very specific programming of power seat functions, which take the guesswork out of using these functions and making them easier to be successfully managed. The smart actuators are also responsible for keeping us safe while automatically limiting or inhibiting the speed or driving ability when the seating system is in certain positions. Uh, so just some of the, uh, the features of ICS is that it, uh, we're, it, it allows us to match the actuator movements to our consumer needs. Uh, we can set the speed reduction and the drive inhibit angle, angles um, outside of the, the factory parameters or outside of the, the factory defaults. Uh, we're able to customize the um, standing or the active reach sequences, which we'll cover today. And lastly, we can utilize those to uh, for programming memory seating, as well as the independent repositioning mode positions. We could also consider using the smart actuator features in combination with the My Permobile app to view live seat, live seat angles when dialing in that perfect position. 
Um, as I mentioned previously, with assignable buttons and soft keys, uh, the standard joysticks can be configured to meet our consumers' unique needs. It's easy access to customize active reach sequence, uh, a favorite seat position, or a variety of other wheelchair functions is possible. These features are available at no additional charge and gives the consumer a variety of options for accessing what they need and how they need to, whether through an external switch or customization of buttons on the joystick, we can simplify the use of actuators to get the most out of the power seat functions. Um, so looking at memory seating first, uh, so memory seating utilizes a combination of any of the four available seat functions, uh, including active height, uh, recline, elevating leg rest, and tilt. And this lets us use a single seat position, which can be saved uh, within each memory position. And you're able to use up to three memory seating positions available um, saved within the joystick. So with memory seating, all the actuators move together to reach the saved position as quickly as possible. This can make it good for situations where an individual needs to change into a position quickly that typically require multiple actuator movements. So for instance, if you think about someone needing to come down if their blood pressure drops really quickly and they just need to get into a recovery position, uh, that's gonna allow them to get into that position as quickly as possible, but still um, use multiple actuators. Um, they can do that using a memory seating position, whereas we're gonna talk about IRM in a second, um, and that uses sequential actuators that might take a little bit longer to access that same position. So again, with memory um, seating, it's just a single seat position that's saved uh, within each of those memory positions, and you do get up to three of them. So in contrast, um, if we look at independent repositioning mode, all of the actuators are moving in a specific sequence rather than all at once. It also consists of both a backward and a rearward position, rather than moving the individual just into a single end position, as is what happens with memory seating. So independent repositioning mode also differs in the actuators it's associated with. So it utilizes a combination of tilt, leg rest, and recline, and that's also the sequence that the actuators move in when moving into that rearward position. So the chair is going to move into tilt first, then the leg rests are gonna move, and then in recline, and then when coming up, it's gonna move in that reverse sequence. The default position of independent repositioning mode is 35 degrees of tilt, 115 degrees of recline, and 135 degrees of leg rest elevation in that most rearward position. But again, this is only a default setting, and Sue's gonna go through in a second how it can be programmed into a different position using the ICS switch box. So individuals may require different adjustments of either tilt or recline, say, if you're thinking about providing maybe a more optimal pressure reduction if the position's being used for weight shifts, um, they may require different recline angle adjustments to help maintain optimal pelvic positioning throughout the sequence or leg rest angle adjustments to accommodate lower extremity range of motion needs. The forward position can also be adjusted to match an individual's preferred normal driving position. It is important to note that if IRM is present and you're utilizing IRM, it does taste the place of one of those memory positions. So you're still gonna have access to two memory positions, but that third memory position is gonna be assigned to IRM then. Both memory seating and IRM do have a lot of functional potential and can be customized to meet an individual's unique goals and needs. In general, those memory positions can be very beneficial in situations that require consistent, reproducible positioning. You can think of things like van access, positioning at a desk for school or a work surface in the home or office. Also positioning for transfers. So if a, if a person's um, consistently transferring to say their bed, or a consistent position you know, to transfer into a vehicle. Um, then you can set it to a specific height, say for like a transfer board transfer. You can also think about it for getting into their normal driving position. So if there's a position that they need to um, sit in for the maximal stability while they're driving, this can be good for setting a memory position. It can also be really good in situations where a patient or a user needs to access tight tolerances or where their visibility may be limited, such as getting under a sink. So they might not really know or be able to look down and see how, what position they need to get into, but the chair can remember a consistent position. Independent repositioning mode, because it utilizes sequential positioning of, again, tilt, leg rest, elevation, or recline, really promotes that maximal benefit of pressure relief protocols, as well as either caregiver-assisted or self-repositioning without that loss of positioning, again, upon returning to upright. It can also be really helpful because, again, no one needs to remember what exact angle someone's going into or what exact sequence of actuators. 
the chair remembers all of that for them. So with one um, joystick deflection movement or one push of a button or a switch, um, that's able to be accessed reproducibly easily um, and it can either be actually latched or unlatched as well. Um, so it can make it easier to access for individuals when they're in that tilted position as well. So I'm gonna hand it off to Stu and then he's gonna go through kind of talking about how to actually program these positions. So before we actually get into uh, programming, um, depending uh, or um, just to increase the video size or decrease the slideshow size, um, whichever you uh, prefer, we'll we'll be doing the the programming on the chair as we as we see the slide. So there should be a divider bar between the um, the video display as well and the and the slideshow. Feel free to click that dividing bar and increase or decrease the size of each. I believe if you're on a mobile app, you uh, need to swipe left or right to toggle between the slideshow view and the uh, and the video view. Uh, so to do uh, to program a memory seating position, uh, depending if the chair has already been configured to uh, to be set up for memory seating or if we need to enable it, uh, we'll start with the process of assuming the chair does not have it enabled, and we will enable it, and then we will then uh, save. Those, those seating positions. So as Sarah mentioned, we did have we do have uh, up to three memory positions that we're all able to save. So we'll enable two memory positions. So to start, we will need a, a dongle or a, a RNet programming key connected to the chair, um, and that will allow us to be able to access onboard programming. So to enter onboard programming mode, we'll look at the joystick here. We'll press the mode button until we see OBP menu across the top. And because we are programming seating, we're gonna, we'll go down to ICS for intelligent control system. Again, that's everything to do with seating. And we're going to go into our seat icon display order one, and we'll actually take a quick look at seat icon display order two. Uh, we'll look at seat icon display order two first. On some configurations, we might have additional actuators or different features on the chair. Uh, so we just want to take note of the number that is being used on the right-hand side here. So our stand A is set at number six, and axis 14 is set at number five. So we just want to keep those, those numbers in mind. So what the seat icon display order is, is the, um, as we enter seating mode through the joystick, it is the order of the icons, uh, the seat functions that will appear. So elevator is number one, our recline is number two, our tilt is number three, our leg is number four, uh, the, the VS leggers, the height adjustment is number five, and then we have S1, uh, which I believe was set to number six. Okay. Then we have an M3 position already set up. So back into programming. We'll go into ICS and seat icon display order one. And we have recall memory one, two, three, as well as save memory one, two, three. We want to enable recall memory one and two. So we already have uh, uh, numbers one through four um, and five and six already being used. So we'll set this up as number seven using the speed up toggle. And we'll change recall memory two to number eight. So this will allow the, the memory icons to appear through the joystick. And we also, if we want to save a position, we'll need to assign a value to save memory one and two. So we'll just continue with numbers nine and 10. And again, we can't use any number. Uh, we can't use the same number twice for different icons. So to exit programming mode, we just deflect the joystick or the input device left, and we'll wait for the ICS switch box lights to flash. Uh, they will go out and then they will come back on. So we'll just let that reset themselves. Okay. And once the LEDs come on, we'll go back into our seating mode and we'll look for our M1 and our M2 icons for memory seating one and memory seating two. So we have M1 as well as M2. Okay. Now we can put the chair in a position that we want to save. Uh, so I'll use the, just for ease of access, I'll use the ICS switch box. And again, memory seating, we can use any actuator on the chair, whether it's um, active height, uh, tilt, 
recline or leg rest. So once we found the uh, position we want, we'll navigate over to M1 and we'll save this position. To save this position, we pull back on the joystick until the icon loses its color. It's about five seconds. After that time, we can see that it's lost its color. We deflect the joystick forward until the icon changes. So once the icon changes, that this position has now been saved under M1. Okay. And now we'll put the uh, we'll lower the chair. Uh, we'll put it back to more a, uh, a more seated position. We'll uh, we'll call it the drive position, and we'll save that position under M2. Okay. And we'll just bring in the legs a little bit. So we'll navigate to M2, and we'll do the same process. We'll pull backwards on the joystick until the icon loses its color. And then we'll push forward and hold it. And once that icon is changed, that position is saved. Now, to access those positions, the uh, we can deflect the joystick forward, and that will access the position. So we were pulling back to initially to to save that position and then we push forward but to just access the position we simply just push forward and hold the joystick or the input device forward and we can do the same to m2 to go to our second saved position now if there's a, a position that has been saved uh, and if we, uh, in this instance, because we have uh, we have enabled that save function on the uh, within programming, uh, if we were in the M2 position, which we currently are, and we were back on the joystick and hold it and then push forward, we could resave that position. So if there is a position that we we uh, we don't want to overwrite or or, or save over. We can go back into program, programming, into ICS, and then see icon display order number one, and change our save memories from the values that we assigned, which was nine and 10, to zero. So once we have our save memory one and two set to zero, we'll go back to the drive screen again, and we'll let the, we'll let the ICS electronics reset themselves, just so we can learn that change in programming. And because we have changed that, that save feature to zero, our memory icons will still appear. So we have M1 and M2. I go back to M1 and I pull backwards on the joystick. The icon will not lose its color because we've, we have removed the ability to save over that position. Okay. But if we deflect the joystick forward, we're still able to, to access that position. Uh, so that is programming a memory position. If the values are um, enabled within the um, that seat icon display order for memory one, uh, recall memory one, two, and three, or or save memory one, two, three, uh, depending on um, if that save function is enabled, we can uh, either recall that position or we could resave and recall that position, uh, depending on on the current programming on the on the chair. So now we'll look at uh, programming independent repositioning mode or or IRM. I'm just going to put the chair back into a regular seated position. Uh, so unlike memory seating, where we program it through the through the joystick, we're actually going to program uh, independent repositioning mode through the ICS switch box. So on the ICS switch box here. Uh, there are um, there's a series of eight LEDs and eight buttons. So we have LEDs uh, one on the top left and eight on the top right, and we have buttons one, two, three, four across the top rows from the left, and five, six, seven, and eight uh, from the bottom row again starting from the left. Uh, now some configurations of of shares may not come with an ICS switch box, um, but because the program or the the programming is the ICS switch box is only needed for the initial programming. We could do the programming on the chair, and then we simply just unplug the uh, and remove the ICS switch box from the chair, and we can still utilize uh, 
the uh, the M3 position because IRM does take over memory position three, and we can use the uh, the forward or uh, backwards deflection to access the independent repositioning mode position. Uh, so if we are using uh, uh, or programming through the switch box, the dongle does not need to be connected. Um, it can still, however, may remain connected, but it is not necessary to, to access this. So to enter uh, IRM programming mode, we'll start with uh, we'll start with the chair turned off, as it currently is, and we'll press and hold buttons five and seven. So on our bottom row, we have buttons five, six is in the second one in, and seven. So I'm gonna press and hold these buttons and turn the chair on. I'm gonna hold these buttons down and then all the LEDs are green, and then at that time, I can release those. Now, whenever we do any programming through the ICS switch box, once we release those buttons, the last LED, the last two LEDs, so LED seven and eight, will flash in a certain pattern, in a certain color, whether it's red or green. You can see here, we have LED number eight, the very last LED is alternating red and green, which indicates we're in the, in the correct mode. Now to enter IRM programming mode, we just press button number seven, and we can see once we do that, the last two LEDs do uh, do change in the in the colors. Right. Now we're ready to store our uh, our IRM positions. So we'll start with the with our backwards position. Now the uh, the icons that are on the ICS switch box may not relate to or may not match up with the functions that the switch box, switch box will perform. Uh, so buttons one and five will operate the tilt, two and six will operate the leg rest, and three and seven will operate the recline or the backrest actuator. Uh, it can be done in any sequence. Once the uh, position is saved, the chair will automatically uh, go into tilt first uh, and then elevate the leg rest and lastly recline. And I'm going to elevate the legs. Again, buttons two and six will operate the leg rests. And lastly, we will move our refine actuator back. Uh, as Sarah did mention, we do have the uh, those default values. Okay. Uh, but this is the way what we can we can change them, um, either make them greater or reduce them depending on the on the need. Once we're in the position that we are happy with, to save the backwards position, we press button four, and we can hear that there's a faint beep. So that is now our backwards position. Now we can put the chair using the same same buttons on the switch box to our our forward our forward position, and adjust our leg rest as well as our backrest angles as well. And once we've found that at that position, uh, to save the forward position, we then press and hold button eight until we hear that beep again. And we've now we've saved our forwards in our backwards position. And to exit programming mode, we simply just turn the chair off. And we'll turn the chair back on and we can review that uh, our memory position. Or sorry, our independent repositioning mode. So as IRM does take over memory position three, we'll navigate to memory position three. If I deflect forward on the joystick or the, or the input device that is uh, connected to the chair, we'll enter the, the backwards position. So initially it will tilt. Once it goes to the, that program position that we just programmed, the legress will then elevate. And then lastly, the recline will uh, will go to its program position. Once there, everything will stop, and we can hold the joystick backwards, and it will come out of that position in the opposite sequence it went into. And that is how the uh, memory seating and independent repositioning mode can be programmed. Thanks, Stu. Um, and it's just quick to note too, you know, about the decision about whether to make the save available um, for the end user who's using the chair. That's just a discussion that you want to have as a team about whether you anticipate their needs maybe being changing. Um, for instance, if they're getting a new vehicle or something like that, and they need to be able to change a different memory position. So that's just a discussion you want to have as a team um, from a clinical standpoint. 
Um, but yeah, so we're going to move on to active reach. So we had a great webinar recently about active reach and that had some really good conversations about design, function, and application. So I encourage you to head over to our website um, and take a look at that if you didn't get a chance to. Um, today we're just going to go through some quick key features of active reach um, before I hand things uh, back off to Stu. Um, the main idea behind active reach is that while we know power seat elevation improves vertical reach, we also know that a significant number of functional tasks done throughout the day also require or greatly benefit um, from having that improved horizontal reach as well. And so we've created this unique system where active height um, elevation really performs together with active reach anterior tilt to enhance both access and function. So here we can see with the seating system in the active reach position, that last position there on the right, um, the posterior aspect of the seating system actually raises. So this means that at 20 degrees of active reach, the posterior aspect of the seat is actually about three inches higher than it, its position in maximum seat elevation. So this results in improved vertical as well as horizontal reach above and beyond what we can um, provide with just seat elevation alone. So as we go on to talk about programming in a minute, it's important to think about this, right? And kind of that relationship and, and all the potential positioning capabilities it affords because of this very specific and unique integration. And so, you know, what chairs is Active Reach available on? So, Active Reach is available on all MNF series Corpus models, um, and you can get up to 20 degrees on the M3 and F3, and up to 30 degrees on the F3, as well as up to 45 degrees on the F5 and F5BS. Also, unlike traditional seat elevate, um, the active height we offer includes up to 10 degrees of active reach at no charge. So, this effectively you really get that 12 inch seat elevate. Um, you know. It, increases to 13 um, and three quarters, and then um, up to 15 and a half with that 20 degrees of active reach. So ahead of some programming, just quickly talking through some of what we can achieve clinically and functionally and how that relates to programming and setup decisions we might make. So, you know, of the things that active reach allows for, one of them is greater independence. And this can mean a lot of different things for a lot of different people. But, you know, thinking about what we know about reaching, being able to reach from that forward position rather from maybe a side position, what that allows for as far as maximizing shoulder strength and range of motion, you know, being able to lift things closer to the body rather than farther away, thinking about how it can improve line of sight and interaction with the environment as well as those around you. We can even think about what it does for trunk positioning, you know, coming into that anterior position and trunk elongation and what that does for things like speech production, you know, and all of these needs are unique to each individual. And that's what makes the fact that the programming to meet them is equally unique so important. Another functional benefit we see with active reach is with transfers. Because of that relationship between active height and active reach, we can program the wheelchair into a position that promotes weight bearing over the feet and moves the individual's chest forward at the same time as it raises the height from which the transfer is occurring. This reduces the overall um, effort needed to stand both for the individual and the overall assistance needed to stand from the caregiver as well. And even at 10 degrees, we can see benefits in positioning for stand pivot transfers as well as transfer board transfers. And while at 30 to uh, 45 degrees with the VS leg rest, we can even allow the foot plates to be positioned all the way to the ground for transfers with most setups. Um, And lastly, we can consider the ways in which we're able to utilize active reach for positioning and stability, both statically and dynamically. By being able to program the positioning of the back angle and leg rest as the seating system moves throughout the active reach sequence, we can help control this effect on pelvic positioning depending on the functional and positioning goals of that individual. In addition, with the use of anterior knee supports, there's that additional point of contact for postural support. Um, with the added benefit of the enhanced kind of customizable optimal programming, this really can pr help, um, help promote optimal stability in the pelvis and trunk, and this may even reduce the need for maladaptive postures when performing functional tasks. It can also support existing range of motion and allow for positioning to overcome things like maybe a fixed hip angle due to something like um, heterotropic ossification to achieve access to surfaces or increased line of sight without having to compromise for joint integrity or muscle length. And for some individuals, that ability to even change or alter their position just a little bit throughout the day can assist with things like reduction in spasticity. So keep some of those things in mind as I hand it back over to Stu and we talk through some of the programming you can do with uh, Active Reach. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, 
So the uh, the last program we will do, do today is for active breach. Uh, similar to uh, IRM, we do utilize the ICS switchbox to uh, to program active breach. Uh, so we'll go ahead and and do that. I'll start my camera back up. Again, uh, to enter any programming mode when we are doing programming through the ICS switch box, we'll start with the chair turned off, and we'll actually press the same buttons to uh, to enter the programming mode uh, as we did with IRM. In this case, it's buttons five and seven. Do you want to turn the chair on? Again, we have a last two. Uh, our, our last LED is flashing red and green. As um, uh, just to confirm, we are still in the same or in the correct programming mode. Uh, and for IRM, we did press button number seven to enter IRM programming. In this case, we're going to press button number one, which will program the first active reach position. There are actually two active reach positions that can be programmed. Uh, so there is one uh, and uh, number two. To program number one, um, as we just pressed, we press number one. If we want to pr program the second one, we would simply just press number two. Once we press either one of those, we'll notice that the switch box is now um, has now gone blank, which is which is normal. So we're in the active reach programming mode. Uh, and again, the icons that are on the ICS switch box, they may not necessarily line up or correlate to the, the functions of the switch box itself. So the way active reach can be programmed is actually by a series of four checkpoints. As you can see um, on the slide, there are uh, four different checkpoints as um, and at each checkpoint, we can then customize and change our leg rest and our back rest angles just for optimum positioning for the, for the user. Yeah. So if I press and hold button number one, that will start, um, the chair will start to go into our checkpoint number one position and the chair will stop and the ICS switch box will beep once we're to that position. Once we're in this position, we're able to make changes to our leg rest and our back rest angles. Okay. So buttons two and six will operate out our recline, and buttons three and seven will change our, our leg rest angles. Once we're happy with the with the position, we press button number eight. Uh, there will be no beep, but once we do get that solid green light on LED number eight, we can continue. So continue holding button number one to go to our checkpoint two, which will be our active reach position. So the fully up position. And once they're there, then we can again change our leg rest or our backrest angles as well as our leg rest angles. Again, once we're happy with those angles, we press button number eight to save. And because we're uh, at our active reach position uh, to come down to our checkpoint three, we would then press and hold button number five to come down. Okay. We get our, it does beep again, so we can change our leg rest and recline. And actually it is at our, uh, our checkpoint four position as well. So we can change our leg rest for our final, our final seated position as we come out of, of active reach. Again, to save it, we'll press and hold button number eight. And we've successfully saved all four of the checkpoints. So the ICS switch box does lose its color. Yeah. So we'll turn the chair off and we'll turn it back on again, just so we can exit that programming mode. And now we're able to, if we navigate to our 
either the S1 or the E1 icon on this uh, on the joystick, and we joystick forward. This will now take us into that um, program, that program active race position that we just saved. Okay. So this is our position to come out of the active race position. We can pull the joystick backwards, and then the chair will then lower to the uh, that seated position. As the chair progresses into that active reach position and out of that active reach position, that's where those leg rest and those recline angles come into play. The, the chair will fluidly go from uh, the, the programmed um, actuator positions from our uh, for both our recline and our leg rests because of those smart actuators. Uh, it'll be a fluid movement from our from our initial starting point, our checkpoint one, to uh, our our fully upright, our active reach position, checkpoint two, and then back down to our uh, our final seated position. Going back to some of the functionality on the uh, on the on the joystick and the um, and the available options. We are able to program uh, through soft keys or assignable buttons the, the functions on the on these four soft keys here. So if I were to press and hold uh, our soft key number four, which is on the bottom right, this is actually programmed for the active reach position. Uh, so whether it's a external switch, which is plugged into the bottom of the joystick, or the uh, or by pressing a soft key, we're able to access. Uh, our active reach position, and same by pressing and holding the same button, we can then come out of that, that active reach position. Okay. And it's important to note that these are just some of the capabilities of what the system offers. So, you know, it's not an all or none type of system. So, for instance, if someone gets, you know, 20 degrees of active reach on their chair, they don't have to only always use all of that 20 degrees of active reach, or they don't only have to utilize active reach um, through that S1 active reach sequence. Um, so if they were in a situation where they just needed to be able to reach a little farther forward um, to access something, they can also um, ac access you know, a little bit of um, anterior tilt with the system as well. Um, so part of what we're showing you today is just some of the capabilities of the system. But what's also great about you know, the power positioning system on our chairs in general is that they have this full scope of capabilities. And we can really match them to, again, the unique use, um, use case for each individual and the unique needs of each individual. Um, so because the system has the capabilities built in, um, we can work with that individual and see, you know, and work with them and through skills training and through that kind of extended delivery process, um, see how those integrate into their lifestyle and see how they integrate um, into their specific needs. Um, so just keep those things in mind um, and, and make sure you're following up with your users as the, you know, as they work with the products um, and throughout the demo process as well. Um, and really understand that, again, this is a whole sp a spectrum of, of capabilities um, that these really afford you and, and afford the end user as well. Yeah, excellent. Uh, so we do have some resources uh, for you as well. Uh, so we do have some clinical justification sheets. Uh, the active reach brochure and actually the programming of memory seating as well as IRM. So they're available as, as handouts currently. Uh, and I believe they will be sent out uh, as well after the uh, shortly after this this webinar concludes. So I think we wanted to be able to open it up to questions now um, because we wanted to we understand that this is kind of a really broad topic and touches on a lot of um, different things. So we wanted to be able to answer as many questions as you had um, and be able to touch on as many things as possible um, while we, we all had you and, and you all had access to us as well. Thank you very much, Sarah and Stu. Yes, we have a few questions in the chat box. And as a reminder to those attending, you can go ahead and enter a question in the chat box. And if we do not get to your question live on the webinar, we will get your question answered via email. So first question is, what is ICS? What does the ICS box stand for? 
Okay, so good question. The ICS is, it stands for Intelligent Control System, and that is uh, Permobile's unique um, electronics for seating. So we, uh, on our chairs, we do have two electronic systems. We have um, RNEP, which we use to um, essentially drive the chair. And um, as mentioned, uh, Permobile has their own seating, seating electronics, um, which is called ICS. So anything seating electronic related is part of that, that ICS system, that intelligent control system. And it um, consists of the, that ICS switch box that we use to move the seat functions as well as programming. Uh, the actuators, um, the seating, uh, the, the master module, which is the brains of the, um, of the ICS system. Um, ICS, <coughs> excuse me, ICS is just the, um, the, the seating electronics on permobile chairs. Thank you very much. And another question somewhat in the same vein is, how would you do the memory positioning and IRM programming without the ICS switch box? Yeah. Uh, another good question. So memory seating, we do not need, um, we do not need the ICS switch box for. Um, I, I was using the switch box just to uh, move the C functions, but you can certainly uh, use the uh, control the C functions through the joystick itself to, to get to that ideal position that you want to save. And then uh, by doing that safe procedure of pulling the joystick back and then deflecting it forward, and that will then save that, that position. Uh, for independent repositioning mode, mode or IRM, a switch box would be would be needed. Uh, but again, it can be any ICS switch box. It, um, if, a, uh, uh, if a provider or a dealer has one, it can simply just be plugged in temporarily uh, to to save those um, save those positions or save that IRM mode. And then once it's removed, it can be again accessed through um, either the joystick or um, those soft keys, the sign buttons or, or external switch. And it's important to note that both memory and IRM can be selected as options that um, come turned on on the wheelchair when you get it. Um, so if you're working with your um, supplier or your vendor and those are things that you want available on your chair when it's delivered, um, those are selectable options on the order form. So the chair can come with, uh, with M1, 2, um, and 3 turned on. So it can come with memory turned on as well as IRM turned on. Um, so you wouldn't have to go through the steps that um, Stu went through to um, make M1, 2, and 3 visible on the joystick. Um, and then you could just go through the steps of saving um, your memory positions. You would still need to, so IRM would come with the default uh, IRM settings um, saved, um, so that positioning that we talked about. Um, but you would need the ICS switch box still to, if you wanted to reprogram the IRM position. Uh, but again, like Stu said, that can be any ICS switch box. Um, and if your supplier or your vendor didn't have access to one, you could reach out to your local uh, permobile manufacturer rep as well. Thank you. Another question, can you latch the memory seating and IRM so the client does not have to hold onto the joystick? Yes, so they can be um, latched through the soft keys, so through the assignable, any of the assignable buttons, they can be latched. They could also be latched through an external switch. If you wanted to latch them through the joystick, um, and Stu can correct me if I'm saying any of this wrong, um, if you wanted to latch them through the joystick, uh, you can latch actuators, but then all of the actuators are latched. So latching the actuators is a global setting. That's correct. Yeah, if, if just to latch a specific uh, seat function, uh, I would recommend uh, using either a soft key on a button or or an external jack, which can be programmed for that latched function. Because uh, as Sarah mentioned, if the uh, if the seat functions are latched through the uh, through the joystick, so or accessing seating through the joystick, then everything is becoming latched. So I would uh, strongly recommend just isolating that to a, a soft key or a um, an external switch. And this is getting this is getting a little a little um, more than what we talked about in this specific um, session. So if anyone wanted additional information on programming the soft keys, programming switches, please 
reach out to your local um, clinical educator or your local um, promobile sales, rep um, sales representative, manufacturer representative. But in addition, it is important to note that since the memory programs are just one position, they're just an end position, um, if you do assign them, for those of you that on the call that know how to assign um, memory functions to the buttons, if you know how to assign a seat function to a button or a switch, you actually only have to assign it as the up function. Um, you don't have to assign it as a toggle. The IRM you do have to assign as a toggle if you just want to do it on one button, but for the memory functions, they only need to be assigned as an up position. Thank you. We have another question asking on which Promobile Power wheelchair models are IRM and memory seating available? That's a good question. Uh, so as long as the chair, uh, as long as the, the Promobile chair has um, uh, ICS as well as uh, smart actuators, then uh, it, it will be um, it will be on the share. Um, so the um, I'm trying to think of the models. So the any of the uh, the Corpus Corpus 3G or Corpus models and uh, Corpus HD. Um, yep. So the uh, Corpus 3G, so the predecessor to the Corpus and the Corpus VS. Uh, even the the older VS that had smart actuators for for memory seating as well. So Excellent. many. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, we have another question. If the batteries of the power wheelchair have to be replaced in the future, does the wheelchair have to be reprogrammed or would the seating programming be retained? No, it's another good question. Uh, so the, the programming is held within the in the base of the chair in the modules themselves. So even if the batteries um, uh, were to be replaced, the all that programming is held within those modules, so there wouldn't need to be any um, any reprogramming of those unless a unless a seating module were to, were, were to be replaced. But just replacing the batteries, there um, that would be a, a seamless seamless transition. Thank you. Another question: How do you set memory seating back to factory defaults? Mm -hmm. That's an interesting question. I don't know if memory seating has a factory default, Stu, do you know? Because it's just an end position, does it have a factory default? Uh, I, I don't believe there is. Um, so really the only way to, uh, to have it truly um, factory reset would be to completely um, reprogram that, that seating module, which, which isn't available at the, at the dealer level. Uh, but if you wanted to just um, eliminate that saved um, or that that saved position, you could either resave it as a just a, a standard uh, drive position or just um, a, a neutral position. So no elevation, not a lot of tilt, just a fairly neutral position. Uh, or if you simply just didn't want to use memory seating anymore, you could turn that function off. Um, so just changing those those values to zero within programming, and then that would um, memory seating would not appear on the on the chair anymore. Thank you. We have a question. Can you reverse the deflection of the joystick for forward and reverse? Uh, that's a complicated question. Um, the long, the short answer is yes. The long answer is it would. It, we would have to walk you through how to do it. It's more complicated than we could probably answer in today's call. Um, the best thing that we could do is, is to point you to your local Permobile manufacturer representative, um, and they could uh, talk you through the steps on how to do that. Thank you. Is there a way to name each function in case I forget which is my drive function and which is for home? Yep, there is. Yep. So, uh, utilizing PC programming, uh, we are able to rename the uh, those those C functions as we see through uh, through seating mode within the joystick, or if it's a, a chair with an Omni two display, we can rename those. So we can have some text as opposed to M one and M two. We can rename those to to have um, those uh, those 
um, those favorite positions as uh, you know whether it's van access or transfer whichever the case is we can we can those can be customized through pc programming thank you how many memory settings can i put into my f5 vs So, uh, so if you're not, yeah. So if you're not using IRM, uh, you can program three memory settings. If you um, have IRM activated, then you have two memory settings and one for IRM. Thank you. Um, we have a question about an end user who likes to cook, and it says that the client um, cooks a lot. Needs to be in seat elevation to reach the stove but when she goes back and forth across the kitchen she um, they say she has to lower her seat out of elevation all the way down to be fast enough um, to go get dishes and they're asking is there a way to adjust the speed so she can drive maybe a little faster in the kitchen when she's in elevate So the so there is a so the chair does go into reduced speed. Um, is the question just in elevate Eleni or in or in in interior tilt or in active reach? Um, it just mentions elevate, but you can speak a bit to how this would um, so, impact using it. Yep. Active so reach. the chairs do go into um, speed reduction um, with elevate um, and also um, stew up in active reach as well, right? That's correct. Yes. Yep. Yep. So sometimes what I've had individu individuals do um, is they have a speed, another profile, another drive profile um, that they use just in those situations. Because what you would actually need to do is increase the overall speed since the speed gets reduced. Um, but then Thank when you. you get down out of that um, position that's causing the speed reduction, your speed might be too fast then. Um, yep. So you, you know might want um, to create a profile that is just for when you're elevated or just for when you're in active reach. Um, and like Stu said, you can name it that. You could you could name it so that you know when you're in that specific drive profile um, because you just want to be careful because then when you come out of that position, um, your, your speeds and rates would also be increased then. So I'm going to interject just now. We are about at the end of the hour. Um, you can go ahead to the next slide and we thank you.